Matt talking to Ron Sidey from Laird. Ron, Laird has a strong background in Bluetooth and the Bluetooth industry. But the way I see it, Bluetooth is evolving from a consumer-based technology into the enterprise. What challenges would you say that Bluetooth is facing and perhaps what benefits will it gain as well from doing that? I think that classic Bluetooth largely is a consumer technology today um, and will largely remain a consumer technology. But when you talk about Bluetooth low energy, I think it's a very different animal. The technologies share a name, but really beyond that, little else in terms of the protocols from a technical perspective, in terms of the applications for it. And already we're seeing an influx of Bluetooth low energy outside of its traditional consumer space into more enterprise applications. Mm -hmm. And so with that brings a number of challenges that we don't see in the consumer space where it's just a point to point link between two devices. Now you're expecting Bluetooth low energy to be really part of an overall corporate IT network. And so a couple of challenges come up. One would be security, clearly. And there's no shortage of examples of, of organizations that have had really bad things happen to them as a result of not keeping their network secure. Bluetooth low energy opens up a deluge of new devices that will be coming into the enterprise. And with that, then the security challenges associated with that. Beyond that, the idea of scalability. With a, a, a consumer technology, security is a matter of encrypting between two data streams. It's all fairly straightforward, and consumers can do it. When you're talking about thousands, tens of thousands, millions of devices on a corporate network, one has to, yes, secure them clearly, but also do it on really a global sort of, sort of basis. Mm -hmm. And so there's the scalability challenge that's associated with that. And so I think that with the advent of Bluetooth low energy in particular, it takes us into a completely different realm that heretofore the Bluetooth community has not been part of. Mm -hmm. And with that, a, a set of challenges that are more akin to Wi-Fi or Ethernet, more traditional sorts of uh, enterprise means of connectivity. Bluetooth's always had a reputation for being a fairly robust and well-designed mm -hmm. standard and specification. Very much so. Do you think it's fully up to meeting those challenges in terms of security and scalability? Within the context of, of the standard, yes. Uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, even Wi-Fi really focuses at layer two and, and below that. The security challenges really are in the upper layers. You're talking about layer three at the IP layer. You're talking about then the application layers above all of that. And I think that the means by which one goes about providing for uh, security for these devices, scalable security, really isn't solved at layer two. It's really solved at the upper layers. And so to answer your question, um, is the standard up to it? Yes, as a foundation. But one has to then build upon that foundation. And that foundation is really beyond the scope of the Bluetooth standards as they're defined today. OK, well, the, the, the Bluetooth Special Interest Group has recently been making uh, announcements about IPv6. Mm. Is this fully resolved? Well, here again, that's, that's foundational. So being able to IP address devices all the way down to the very edge of the network via Bluetooth Low Energy is a really important step. Mm -hmm. But IPv6 really doesn't speak in of itself than the idea of uh, security. Rather, it's just the foundation upon one builds then uh, security. And when, and when I talk about security, it's, it's yes, encryption, clearly. Uh, and Bluetooth does, of course, speak to uh, uh, AES-128 but it's also authenticating to the network, uh, proving that that, that that device and the user of that device is a trusted member of the network, and indeed the network is trusted to the device. Sure. That's a part that really hasn't been addressed today. I think there'll be a number of vendors, certainly layered amongst them, who will be leading uh, the industry in terms of how we go about solving this really fundamental challenge. And in the absence of solving that, we really don't see then the promise of IoT coming into play because if you can't secure devices to the network, you can't get data off the devices, you can't get the data off of the devices, no big data, no IoT, no real benefit. No, I can certainly it's fundamental. see that. And then how do you see Bluetooth in the wider wireless context? I, I think people companies, uh, the media, forgive me, uh, like to gin up this sort of uh, controversy. You know? So it's, it's, it's Bluetooth versus Wi-Fi and back and forth in a grudge match and who's, who's going to win. But I think you have to look at it really within certain uh, uh, domains, areas. And so that is to say you've got personal area networking, wide area networking, um, local area network. And in the medical context, you talk about actually body area 
networks beyond that. And so within each of those contexts, what you do see is you do see one technology ultimately winning out over the other ones. And so there are real grudge matches that have occurred in the past. Um, there are. It's not just made up. It's, it's, not, just, it's not just made up. <laughs> it, it, it sells papers, I suppose. Um, so if, if you look at uh, Ethernet versus Token Ring, one, one, one out over time. LTE versus, say, CDMA, one, one out over time. Bluetooth versus Zigbee. And um, I, I think you would agree that the party's over, the battle's over, so, and, yes. and, and, and Bluetooth, Bluetooth won. But when you look at then the various different domains, you don't have winners and losers, rather you have complements. You have different technologies that have to then work together. And so uh, coming back to IPv6, um, I think that's a fundamental sort of bridging technology between all of them. And so regardless of the transport, regardless of what's going on at layer two, you've got this commonality at layer three. And so that really is sort of a, uh, a, a, a means of interoperability beyond, beyond all of that. And then so the, uh, you take that foundation, that bridge across those technologies, and you build then on top of that in terms of security, in terms of scalability, in terms of the uh, various different applications. Well, in our main roundtable discussion, we touched upon whether there would be a dominant connectivity technology in the Internet of Things. It sounds as a, a little as if you may feel that, if not completely dominant, Bluetooth may be a leading technology there. Oh, certainly, yeah, yeah. And, and, and classic Bluetooth, really more of a cable replacement, a great way to connect your, say, smartphone to your earbud, your, your tablet to your, your, your Fitbit or something like that. Not really an enterprise context. BLE, on the other hand, very much different, a different story. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to see a lot more of that coming into the, uh, into the enterprise. Well, thanks very much for that, Ron. Uh, we will certainly have to watch Bluetooth's performance in the enterprise over the coming months and years. Indeed. Thank you. Mm -hmm.